Hey, what's up? In just about a month, I'm heading to Utah for a high country mule deer hunt with my bow. This is a very glassing intensive hunt. So I'm gonna walk you through my optics setup and let you know why I'm bringing what I'm bringing. Hey, what's up? It's Josh from the Dialed In Hunter. TikTok, man, falls creeping in quick. I hope you all drew the tags you wanted to and have some killer adventures planned. I'm getting really excited. I've got a mule deer hunt in Utah coming up here real shortly. This is going to be my first hunt of the fall. Uh, it's going to be a backpack style hunt above the trees for mule deer with my bow. And I cannot wait. High country mule deer hunting with my bow is one of my favorite things during the year to do. So um, this is a really glassing intensive hunt. The country is big and rugged and just demands a lot of time behind the glass in order to hunt it effectively. So that's really what I wanted to talk about is optics and why I'm bringing what I'm bringing. Um, this is a backpack hunt, right? So weight is always a concern. So for me, for binoculars, um, I, I really like a 10 by 42. I think a 10 by 42 is the best all around magnification that you can get for Western hunting. It's kind of a jack of all trades. You can wear it on your chest, freehand glass with it, put it on a tripod and scan for hours and hours with it. And it's going to do you great. Uh, it's also not that big. Okay. So, um, Something like a 15 or an 18 or even a 20. These are really great and you can look through them for days at a really long distance, but they're big and bulky and that's just not in my best interest on a hunt like this. So my my go-to, I'm, I'm going 10 by 42 Razor UHDs from Vortex. I have no complaints about these things. I really, really love these binoculars. They're, they're crystal clear. They feel great in my hand and uh, they're really good at seeing animals. So <laughs> that's what I'm bringing with me. Uh, in my, I'm gonna wear these on my chest. And then this will be my go-to for when, like when I get to a glassing spot, this is what I'm pulling out. I'm sitting down and putting these on a tripod and I'm gonna do the vast majority of my glassing with my binoculars. Uh, once I do find a buck, um, I want to get a closer look, right? Let, check them out, uh, check out the terrain around the bucks to, to help try to plan a stock. So the first high country mule deer hunt I ever went on, um, I brought a spotting scope with me. It was a smaller spotting scope. I believe it was a uh, 50, 50 millimeter, I think. Um, don't quote me on that. It was the smallest uh, one that Vortex offers. Um, and it did, like, it, it did its job, um, but the country was a little too big for that particular size of spotting scope. Um, I, I didn't really feel like I could look through that spotting scope for a really, really long time just because of the, the field of view was, was, uh, smaller. Okay. Then looking at my binoculars or in this spotting scope right here, which I'll talk about. Um, so I had two high country mule deer hunts a few years back. One was in Utah. One was in Colorado. The first one I took the smaller spine scope with me. And the second one I took uh, this spine scope with me, which is a 65 millimeter. Okay. Um, I truly believe the reason that I shot the buck that I did in Colorado on that second hunt is because of this spotting scope. I don't think I would have found the buck that I did if it wasn't for that. And I don't think I would have been able to keep eyes on him as well as I did without it. Um, and aside from that buck, there were other situations where, you know, we'd lose a couple bucks in, a, in like a patch of timber and I could really take that spotting scope and just grind through that timber and really pick it apart and be able to pick out antler tines in the dense timber. Um, whereas if I just had my binoculars or I had that smaller spotting scope, um, that I, I really don't think that would have been the case. Uh, I would have had to wait for them to come out in the open, which 
would have been a lot of time wasted. So for me, um, I know weight, like weight's a concern. And that's why I went with that smaller spotting scope on that first hunt. But um, if you can't find them, you can't kill them, right? So this is absolutely worth worth it to me for a little more bulk and a little more weight. So this is a 65 millimeter uh, Razor HD spine scope from Vortex. Um, the field of view on it is is really, really good, man. Like I can, I, I feel like I can look through this thing all day long because it's just easy to look through. Um, you don't feel constricted, like you're looking through a little, you know, like a little pinhole. Um, so yeah, this is really great and it's great for digiscoping. I do a lot of like phone scoping and stuff and this this looks uh, really great, gives a great picture. And it fits good in my backpack, so there's that too. I prefer angled, um, talk about that really quick. Uh, I, I use straight spine scopes for a bit there and they definitely have their place. They do fit a little bit better in a backpack but the angled ones to me are easier to look through. So um, I went with an angled. Now the downside of an angled is like, so the, the upside is it's easier to look through in my opinion, because if you're sitting down on your glassing stool and you have this in front of you, just like look down, right? Um, the downside of it is target acquisition is, a, it can suffer a little bit, right? And the reason being is because this isn't in line with this. Okay, so if you've got a deer way out there and you're going to you know, switch over to your spotting scope so you can get a better look at them, a straight spotting scope is gonna be easier to pick up that target, again, being the deer. With this, it takes a little bit of practice. Like, it's not a deal breaker. It's just something you have to get used to. Um, and then looking uphill, this is way easier to look uphill with. So if something's way up, you know, like you can like angle your, your tripod up and not like have to get down on your knees and lay down to look through the spotting scope to see what's up there. And then if something's downhill, all I do is there's this little screw right here. You just undo this and you just turn the spotting scope and I just look through the spotting scope like this down the hill and it's worked out really great for me. So that's what I'm taking as far as binoculars and spotting scope goes. Uh, I've been really happy with this combination in the past for, for alpine mule deer. So um, last thing I'm gonna touch on here uh, is my tripod. A tripod is absolutely mandatory in my opinion. Um, if you can get away with no spotting scope, um, but man, a tripod, it, if you don't have a tripod you're really missing out on a lot of game and that you're not seeing so um it, at the very least if you can only do two two of these things get a tripod and a pair of binoculars for 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 mule deer hunting or just deer hunting in the west in general and you, you're going to be okay uh for me what i'm bringing this is this is a carbon tripod i mentioned it's a backpack hunt right so it's going to be a little bit lighter uh, Summit Carbon Tube Vortex uh, Tripod. It's a twist lock. So they extend like this, little twist guys that locks in place. Really easy to use. These little clips right here are, are locks. So this leg doesn't go past this point right here, right? Well, if I do that, now it goes like this, right? So you can really like conform the tripod to wherever you are. A lot of this country is super steep, right? With rocks all over the place. So you kind of have to finagle the legs to like get the perfect position for glassing. Um, and this is this has worked out really well for me, this tripod. Uh, the head is a Saray VA5. Um, I have been super, super happy with this head. It is butter, butter smooth. Um, the machining on it is, is, is incredible. It's just really, really well built. And I've never had any issues with sticking or anything breaking or falling apart or anything like that. So um, it works pretty easy. This, this is the knob right here. Uh, this is a fluid head for glassing. Um, really, really beneficial when you're tearing country apart with your glass. And then this one right here uh, lets you plane left and right. And, um, and then I have a couple tripod heads. This is my, from my binocular hookup there, adapter. 
and then I have another head on the spotting scope. I like carrying multiple of those heads. So I, I used to not do that, believe it or not. I would have to like undo the, the tripod plate and put it on my binoculars and then take that off and put it on a spotting scope. <laughs> so uh, save yourself the trouble and just get like multiple tripod plates and you're gonna be like a lot faster in the field. So that's it. That is my glassing setup for high country mule deer. Um, if you, if your glassing setup is any different, drop it down below, man. I want to hear like what and why you're bringing what you're bringing and how it's worked out for you. I'm super psyched on, on this hunt coming up here. I can't wait to put this stuff to use. This combination right here, I think is super versatile and effective at the same time. Um, you know, there's some guys out there that'll carry three or four different pairs of optics with them and that's fine. But to me, in this type of hunt, doing something like that is just not practical, uh, like for backpack hunting and stuff. So if you like the channel, please hit subscribe. If you like the video, please hit thumbs up. Absolute best of luck on all of your fall hunts. I hope you make some incredible memories. Until next time, stay safe out there.